Well hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and as you can see we are back on the VF1000 um, the good news is that I did take it for an MOT um, and it passed with uh, no advisories which is great uh, however on the way back um, my right leg got very hot and wet and um, it turns out that there's obviously an issue with the cooling system because uh, out of the uh, radiator cap there was hot pink liquid coming out and um, finding its way down through the fairing and then coming out and soaking my uh, right leg so yeah not good so um, more investigation required to find out what's going on here um, I have taken off the uh, expansion tank which normally sits there um, I don't think I should call it an expansion tank because this is a sealed uh, pressurized system um, so it's more like a reserve tank I suppose but um, anyway I've taken that off it was absolutely full of uh, oh, the worst crud I think I've ever seen in my life There was a pipe that comes along here, goes under the tank, goes up to the radiator um, cap. That's completely solid with gunk. Uh, here's one, or oh, this is part of the pipe actually that comes off that, and you can see what's going on here. That, oh, that's just fell off. Um, the inside of these pipes are completely jammed with old coolant that's gone crusty so not good um yeah so where do i go with this well let's go back to basics first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to finish my cup of tea and then when i'm finished that um we're going to start working our way through this cooling system first thing we're going to do is test the uh the system see if it holds pressure because it's a pressurized system like i say and um this uh system on the vf um, it's pressurized to 0.9 uh, bar which is just under 15 psi and the manual says um, to test it to 14.9 I'm not sure we can be that accurate but we'll see how we go so um, obviously the cooling system is cold now so I can take the radiator cap off oops yeah this is the sort of thing we're dealing with um, this whole system is clearly going to need to be flushed out and cleaned out it's just full of this jelly like substance um, it's pretty disgusting so um, from what I could tell there's a um, the overflow for this is is you can't really see it, it's behind here connected to that pipe we looked at just now goes down to the um, I'm going to call it an expansion tank um, and it it wasn't the the overflow the, sorry the cooler wasn't going down there it was actually coming out the edge of this cap because that pipe's so blocked up um, so that tends to suggest to me that the the cap itself had operated well it doesn't feel very clever but anyway what we do or how we test this <clears throat> the whole system uh, for pressure is we replace this cap with one out of a kit i've got and then we pump up we're using a bicycle style uh, pump to 0.9 bar and uh, we see if it holds pressure for two minutes um, i have done a, a full how-to video on this um, which you may have seen before if not you can go and find that out on the how-to playlist uh, if you want to know more information about how this kit works all right this appears to be the correct size um, cap that i need so let's clean out as much of that junk as we can Wow, that is pretty horrible. And we'll fit this cap in place. Like so. I'm going to attach the pump. That's it. Okay, so I'm going to pressurise this now. 
um, to 0.9 bar, which is about there, 15 PSI, 40.9 the manual says. Let's give it a go. This is literally just a hand pump, like you'd expect if you're push, uh, pumping up your bike tyres. Apologies for my voice, by the way. I've had a weird head cold thing going on for the last couple of weeks, and um, it's, I just can't shake it off at the minute. Okay, so um, that is one bar. So I'm just going to focus my fingers in the way, which is on the inner ring, 14.9, uh, 15 psi. So the idea now <clears throat> is we wait two minutes. And the hope is that that needle stays where it is. If it starts to go down, it means we've got a leak in the um, coolant system somewhere because it's losing pressure. And that could be anything from um, faulty, well, not a radiator cap in this case, because we've obviously replaced it with um, the one out of the test kit. But it could be anything from um, a hold uh, pipe, a loose banjo clip, it could be, um, uh, a hole in the radiator worst case scenario um, we could have something like a blown head gasket uh, and therefore have water leaking into the the oil in the engine um, but yeah let's wait two minutes fingers crossed let's see what happens okay that's our two minutes up um, and i've not noticed any perceptible movement in that needle whatsoever so i think we can conclude from that that the system is at least um, holding pressure and there are no leaks um, which is obviously a good thing so on to the next step so really the next question to ask is um, why did it start to uh, overheat or more to the point overflow um, when it did because um, we've tested pressure we know that's okay this um, cap should operate at 0.9 bar I suppose one possible reason is that this cap um, is operating before 0.9 bar um, clearly the reason it was coming out the top of the radiator and, by, and going past here was because all these overflow pipes and all the rest of it on the bike are all blocked my guess is because this bike was standing for many many years um, there's just a blockage in the coolant system somewhere that's um, causing overpressure in certain areas of it. So we're gonna clean the system out with the radiator flush. That's the first thing to do. But I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm guessing that possibly the thermostat, which is here, is all gunked up as well. And that um, might stop our coolant flush from going around the whole system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the radiator uh, thermostat I'm oh, sorry, the cooling system thermostat out. Um, and then we're gonna fill the system up with the flush and we're gonna run it up to temperature and follow the instructions for the flush. Looks like we've only got two bolts holding on the uh, thermostat housing. Eight mil one there, one around that side. Yeah, Let's get those off. Okay, the mystery deepens because, guess what, no thermostat. So, why would somebody run it with no thermostat? Well, if it's been prone to overheating, if we leave the thermostat out, the water is constantly going through the radiators, not just when it's hot, and in theory that might help to keep it cooler. Um, but really all that's doing is masking some of the kind of problem somewhere so let's carry on with the investigation right what i'm going to try next is making sure 
the engine can't start so the kill button's in the off position turn the ignition on I'm just going to crank the engine over and what I'm looking for and come around this side is whether we get when I crank it over any kind of fluid coming out of this um, radiate uh, this thermostat housing because that'll at least um, tell me that the water pump is turning properly okay so I've got fluid coming out of the radiator housing so that tends to suggest that the um, uh, the pump itself is working correctly or is at least working um, we don't know what state it's in but it is at least pumping coolant around the system so I'm going to flush the system with this liquid molly uh, radiator cleaner um, which is obviously for flushing out uh, coolant systems uh, and it basically says to put the entire contents uh, into the radiator start the engine let it idle for 10 to 30 minutes uh, and let it do its thing right that's filled it up with the uh, coolant flush so now I'm going to start the bike up and it run for 10 minutes switch it off and if we take a look at our uh, temperature gauge I'll turn the ignition back on you can see we're up to operating temperature um, and I also confirmed as the temperature gauge went further up than that that there's the electrical fans there's two fans um, radiator cooling fans on this bike uh, can you see them let's have a look you can just about see one of them in there there's the blade I'm turning with my finger um, they were going as well and then the temperature um, on the gauge did come back down so I know the fans are working on the Kawasaki's I had if you turn the ignition off and then you were still hot the fans used to run um, on this bike doesn't seem to be the case as soon as I turn the ignition off the fan stopped I'll check that just to make sure that is correct while it was running I have had some coolant come out of this um, overflow pipe which is the one that comes from the um, radiator cap so when the radiator cap uh, opens and uh, when it gets to 0.9 bar the coolant can bypass the system and can go back into the reserve tank uh, and I have collected some uh, coolant in here so that seems like quite a lot to me maybe i just overfilled the radiator i did fit it right to the top um but we'll see as we carry on with the investigations anyway for now i'm going to go and have um some lunch let the cooling system cool down and then when we're back um we can start investigating further all right lunch break over back to it um so hopefully the cooling system's uh cooled down enough now that uh, I can drain the fluid so um, the next thing to do really is uh, drain it all down drain all the coolant down and then we're going to start flushing um, the system out just with fresh water uh, to see what we can get out of it um, I think there's two or three different drain uh, points on this for the cooling system on the um, on the thousand this this um, frame member here actually forms part of the cooling system you can see the radiator um, hose going in and coming off here and uh, going up to the water pump so there's a drain plug built into the frame tube under here so we've got to get this off for a start um, and I think there's another couple of drain plugs as well there's certainly one 
up there and I think there's one for the front cylinder block as well somewhere we'll have a look at that in a second anyway first thing to do is get the uh, get the lower cowling off seems to be simple enough just four bolts one here one here and the corresponding ones on the other side So the main drain for the coolant is that one under the frame but that one there which holds the water pump in a pan that one's also a drain so that needs to come off that's eight mil and there are two more drains there's one that uh, screw in there sort of bolt in there on the front of the left cylinder head and there's a corresponding one um, on the front of the other front cylinder head on the other side that's now fully drained near enough just a few drips coming out so i'm going to pull all the drain screws back in uh wheel the bike outside because i really don't want to flush it while it's uh, sat in here in the carport and um yeah we'll uh, get the hose pipe out see what we can do I think what I'm going to do is um, start with this pipe here because this is on the thermostat housing it's relatively easy to get to um, and I can put my uh, pressure gun thing I've got you'll see that in a bit on this pipe um, sorry this pipe and then hopefully we'll be able to see um, any muck or debris coming out from the thermostat housing and obviously there's no thermostat in here at the moment as we know so I'm going to undo this um, pull this pipe off, move the bike outside and uh, we'll start flushing it. Well, that's it for today's video i'm off to order some parts for the cooling system uh, i need a thermostat probably a radiator cap just to be on the safe side and uh, a couple of gaskets so i uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and i'll see you in the next one